Farmer. I will be performing the monologue Tim from It Came From Texas by John Weckeser, playing the part of Tim. Weird? You think I'm weird? You come into my basement, which, by the way, is owned by Texas Today, and you start yelling at people because of the music that's playing? What a weak will you must have, eh? But I suppose that's not weird, is it? No, of course not. It's completely normal to just go along with the flow and do whatever everyone else is doing, and never taking the time to question what's going on or where you're going. It's perfectly normal to be a sheep. Ah, but I do know something about you, Beth, that isn't so normal. Oh, that would hurt, wouldn't it? If I could expose something about you that wasn't so pristine and pure and, heaven forbid, normal, that would be awful. But, sadly for you, I do. Why did you come over here today, Beth? Oh, that's right. You came to see Jonas, whom you care about, right? Yes, you do. You care about him. Well, that's too bad, because it's not normal to care about anyone these days. It takes too much effort and individualistic thought. People want what they want now, and they don't give a damn who they hurt or why they hurt them. That's what's normal. That's what's not weird. Right, Beth? But you care about him anyways. What is causing you to throw yourself onto that spear? You know he'll never want you. You know this. You're too intense for him. Jonas can't live in your world any more than you can live in his, and yet, despite this, you still call to him. You still go to him. Do you enjoy the heartache? He'll only be there for you when he has nothing else to do and is bored with himself. Run, Beth. Run while you can. Only pain awaits you at the end of this road. But you know it, and you're going to walk down the road to the end anyway, knowing it will only leave you empty and hurting. But you call me weird? Please. What? Oh, calm down, Beth. I wasn't serious. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Lex Sinclair, and I will be performing the character Inez from No Exit by Jean Paul Sartre. To forget about the others. How utterly absurd! I feel you there in every pore. Your silence clamors in my ears. You can nail up your mouth, cut your tongue out, but you can't prevent your being there. Can you stop your thoughts? I hear them ticking away like a clock. Tick tock, tick tock, and I'm certain that you hear mine. It's all very well skulking on your sofa, but you're everywhere, and every sound comes to me soiled because you've intercepted it on its way. Why, you even stole my face. You know it, and I don't. And what about her? About Estelle? You've stolen her from me, too. Do you suppose if she and I were alone that she'd treat me the way she does? No, take your hands from your face. I won't leave you in peace. That'd suit your book too well. You'd go sitting on your couch like some sort of yogi in a trance, and even if I didn't see her, I'd feel it in my bones. That every word she'd say, every sound that she'd make, Every rustle of her dress was for your benefit. Well, I won't stand for that. I prefer to choose my help. I prefer to look you in the eyes and fight it out face to face. Well, what are you waiting for? Do as you're told. What a lovely scene. Coward Garson holding baby killer Estelle in his manly arms. Make your stakes, everyone. Will Coward Garson kiss the lady or won't he dare? What's the betting? I'm watching. Everyone's watching. I'm a crowd all by myself. Do you hear the muttering, Garson? Do you hear the crowd muttering and mumbling? Coward, 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 coward! Because that's what they're saying. It's no use. I'll never let you go. What do you hope to get from her silly lips? Forgetfulness? But I won't forget you, not I. It's I you must convince. So come to me. Come to me now. I'm waiting. Look at him. Look at the beauty of his 
a dog who comes when his mistress calls. You can't hold him. You never will. Thank you. My name is Isis Saloger, and I'll be playing uh, Maya from the bathroom. Someone wrote something about me in the, the high school bathroom today, and I don't know what it says. I mean, when you, it made me cry when I heard it, because if your name's etched into one of those walls, it's never for something good. It's never, Maya Peters is a great friend, or Maya Peters makes amazing cookies. I, I do, I mean, I, I make great cookies, but you know, not, not, not good enough for it to be permanently etched in school. Unfortunately for me and my feelings, um, I don't know, I can't read what it says. Part of it is scratched out or something. It, plus it's in the uh, upstairs bathroom by the eighth graders, and they're really mean. They call me like junky and juvie when it's my dad in jail, not me. I don't even drink coffee! But the other day I really had to go during algebra, and there it was. Maya Peters is a something. I, I don't know, I couldn't read it. Someone must have took like a screwdriver and gouged out the words. And I, it left me thinking of what what possible what they could possibly be. Most letter most of the words had four letters. Some had five or six. But it felt it was worse not knowing, because it felt like I'd been called every word instead of just one. I told my friend Cass about it in my lunch. Um, I'm not supposed to hang out with Cass because my mom thinks he, cause he's a stoner. But I like him because he's nice and doesn't care what people think about him. He told me, think about it this way. He was smoking but doing it discreetly so that way <laughs> uh, the teachers wouldn't notice. <laughs> Someone was nice enough to cross it out. Besides, it could have been anything. <laughs> I thought about that. About who could be anything. Anything I wanted. And, like, it doesn't have to be, Maya Peters is an alky, or Maya Peters is a stoner. It could be, Maya Peters is a teacher. Maya Peters is a CEO. <laughs> Maya Peters is something. I, I don't know. Well, Cass handed me a cigarette. I took a drag but didn't inhale the smoke in. Just let it roll around in my mouth as I contemplated the big things in life. My dad in jail, the big space next to my name, and all the things I still might do. Thank you. <laughs>